Yes. Uh, Bhante, I have a question. Uh, I'm actually teaching students uh, 9 to 12 years orientation class. Uh, so I have students who come to learn the Dharma. Mm. They have either uh, no knowledge or little knowledge of the Dharma. Mm. So they come to learn and then uh, some parents mm. decide to uh, see Dharma as an option. That means uh, we have uh, other classes to attend like uh, music, uh -huh. uh, football, uh -huh. swimming, uh -huh. etc. Uh -huh. So all these are given importance to uh -huh. the child uh -huh. and Dharma is optional. That means, uh -huh. uh, so I have this problem where they decide to go to, those, to the other classes and stop their Dharma class. And why is it optional? In what kind of association? Is it a Buddhist association or is it just a club or a social center or why is it? I'm teaching uh, in the Sunday school uh -huh. in uh, Buddhist Mahavihara. Uh -huh. And even in Mahavihara it's yeah. optional. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That's no. good to be so open. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Ah, this is extracurricular. That's right, that's right. So you have a Sunday school, but yeah. then extracurricular you can take also Sunday school? No, no, no. <coughs> ah, okay. Okay, so this is this is something. Look, if we focus on for example what the Buddha taught, I don't think for example if the Dharma refers to morality starting just with Sila, I don't think that is very optional for any human being if you ask me. Because that is a matter of respecting oneself and respecting others. So I don't know if, if it is... Uh, can you tell me more? How is this? Or I, I don't understand why in a Bihara the Dhamma is optional. It's like it doesn't... No, no. The, the parents. The parents are taking it uh, optional. That means uh, if the child decide uh, some of them the parents themselves want to stop the child some the pa uh, the child actually wants to um, uh, go for do those uh, sports uh, sports uh -huh, or whatever or music whatever or. yeah the sports uh, like football so they are free to go yeah they yeah. are free to go so they stop their dharma classes uh -huh. so how how do i deal this with this because uh, i do go and talk to the parents you know uh -huh. um, I do go and talk to the parents, uh, but they still decide to stop the Dharma class and go for those curriculum. For the, uh, and why did the, this association is a Buddhist association? No, it's a not. Only these are like short activities by the parents. Let's say they want to go to chess club. Mm. Weekend chess clubs. Yeah. Instead of school. Ah, so okay. Go for the swimming class, Dharma class. They see no value in Dharma Ah. Yeah, so they send the kids to other curricular activities. Yeah, but, and that's how the world goes everywhere. For example, I tell you, in Mexico we have no Dhamma school. There is no Dhamma school. So of course the, the parents send them to football or to chess or to swimming. So I haven't get this, uh, sorry. No, the, the, the thing is actually they have been coming to the Dhamma school mm. and they stopped halfway because they felt like they want to go back to those yeah, activities. Oh, yeah, it depends how we present the Dhamma, but oh, if the other thing is more entertaining or fun, it, that will be the tendency. This is part of why we need to also bring to the kids an option and also talk to the parents and the children as much as we can of the importance because this is morality is not something that is kind of optional because because of morality there is harmony in the world and because of the absence of morality things go down and also morality brings mental stability and then after that yes you can improve your body you can do exercise or intel this sorry excuse me yeah so uh, we can we can uh, uh, foster foster with uh, the kids to do all, all other things but i think it will be a talk mostly with the parents because the children of course if you give the option to the children what do you want to do study and recite something or go to swim Oh, you're seeing, yeah, yeah. Maybe they will see, but as before, we give the value. I think parents 
to see the importance to promote that in a way and finally you cannot do nothing because if you start forcing people what of course people will complain and if the kid feels forced that we saw today it is the worst position that you can have a kid which when it is forced so it, it will not come in and actually as dhamma teachers if we push something we can be doing actually akusala in this way we are helping a human being to be averse towards whatever has to do with the dhamma and i have seen it because of pushing pushing the kids the kids just gets aversion towards the buddha or towards the sangha and that is heavy because in the long run, they already planted the seed of dosa regarding, regarding the way we do things. And then eventually they lose interest. No sada can arrive, no right effort can arrive. And actually we did wrong. So I would say that before pushing anything, try to speak as much as possible. Understanding that also, and we can make peace, maybe this can bring peace. It is also spirituality cannot be forced. Even I heard, uh, I heard once that it says spirituality is not taught it is answered ah very nice yes only when people want and how it happens to you if whoever continue in the dharma did somebody maybe somebody maybe your parents force you but then later you saw the value but i dare to say that a big percentage of all though all of us stay on the dharma because the mind saw something the mind, so as it happened to me, imagine I born in the other side of the world, Catholic, totally no Dhamma at all. But the first time I listened to the Dhamma, something inside was, yes, 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 yes. So, sorry. Yes, yes, just, just like, it. yeah, yeah, yes, as you said, this, yes. <sighs> Finally, somebody's talking onto something that is reasonable. I don't need to believe on it just because of blind faith, as I was mostly taught. So this, we can also make peace. We try our best, promote the uh, activity as something essential for the well-being of the mind and development of the child, if the parents, and also of the parents for the whole family. But if they don't listen after we said, yeah, we also make peace with even, isn't it? Do you have brothers and sisters or family members that you know are suffering? And you have the tool that, has, that you know is work because we tried it and they are not open to receiving it yeah. even your own mama or your papa i mean i hope your family is practicing that. but isn't it our own our own brother or sister when the interest is not there and then we can uh, talk about padmis if you wish because it's a little bit controversial but okay you can talk about it depends on the people if the pe person already planted the seed of wisdom in the past it already has a good smell whenever you smell wisdom <laughs> Wait, 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 so something, something, and then you go in the way we came. Why are you here? Why you decided to become a Dhamma teacher? Because also you have many peers who practice the Dhamma, but they didn't dare to go and teach. Oh, no, no, so no, to take that struggle, I just practice my five precepts, isn't it? So, in the same way, we make peace, and I know this is a hard cookie. Even with our fa close family, when the time is, n when the fruit is not right, you cannot push. If the mango is there green, we can pray. If we can pray like this, we can meditate. Okay, let's dance. Let's put oils. Let's put whatever. The mango will only come ripen when the conditions are present. So I know how hard it is. Thank you for your care. Thank you for the compassion and the will to try. And I will say at the same time, look. Better stay with this one because as you have seen maybe, I'm a kind of an optimistic monk. So keep trying. Inform the people. This is what I see. What you do with this information is yours. I offer it with all my heart as, a, as an offering. It will be good for everybody. But the last choice, the seeds were planting, be planted be long ago. So we make peace with that. Mm -hmm. Patience, we go. Both optimism and patience, patience together. And I'm still very hopeful that we can make a big change. <laughs> yes. Ante, thank you for your sharing today. And um, my question is, uh, just now Ante shared about how we can make Dharma more engaging and connect better with the students. Mm. And just now in the context, most, most of the context is in children age maybe below 12 years old yes. we'd like to ask uh, Bante for teenagers 13 to 17 is I there any waiting. advice or yeah ways that we can uh, I, I was waiting for this question <laughs> thank you very thank much you, Bante. and actually look when preparing this session 
Believe me, I spent the last two days cutting things because it was impossible. There are so many things. And one part that was included, it was how to deal with each of the ages. Tips that I have found to deal with each age. How you deal with babies in the Dhamma. How you deal with children, like the age we cover, because that's the examples I have. And then how to deal with teenagers. And as you saw, I, deal, I work with teenagers in the past. So tricks. I will pass you now only the teenagers once. I better, in, in case I, I don't want to forget any. Okay, so one of the things, one of the main things with teenagers, first, as, as uh, here it is, as teachers, my dear family, if you haven't studied the stages of development of a human mind psychologically, by, by psychology, what is the mind doing when we are a child, when we are a baby, what is the brain and the mind doing? What is it doing when we are 6 to, to 10? And what is it doing on teenagers, prepare for teenagers? Poor us, we already went through. Does anybody would love to go back to your teenagehood, teenage years? Don't me no, eh? it was horrible. The body was changing, I didn't understand all the hormones moving up and down. But one very important thing that is happening in the psyche of a teenager, it is their right it is their moment. Look, teenagerhood starts at 12. Sorry, I hope it's not too loud. Is okay? So, okay. So, teenagerhood starts at 12. From 0 to 12, <coughs> we all were told what to do without questioning. Because, yes, we are not yet mature and our parents know better. And oh, sometimes even they abuse a little bit of that position, etc., etc. But we won't enter into that. We will not open that box. Anyway, we were told. The least thing that a teenager wants at that time from 13 to 16, 17 is to be told what to do because he's fed up again. I spent already 12 years just following what you say because, but now they're starting to have reasoning. So actually, when parents start to fight because we want to continue controlling, actually, the chasing one is not the teenager. The chasing one is the parent because it's like telling a kid, don't play. Don't play, you should behave like a CEO. <laughs> you mean a four-year-old? Of course not, the four-year-old needs to do what a four-year-old do. A teenager is right in the moment when he wants to find his own way. He wants to prove to himself, that's why they are daring and willing to take challenges, because that's what they must do. If we parents try to stop them, <sighs> we adults are very silly. <laughs> We are just stopping them from the very thing that they must be doing, and we are making them dependent, soft, because, oh, no, 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 don't do this, don't take, no, go take risks, I will take a look, and yes, you will hit your head, I know, it, but that's life, man. So, we, we stop taking, we're going against, another thing, that's why they're rebellious, of course they're rebellious, la. let me think, that's, what is the message they're giving to us? Let me think for goodness sake, let me start trying by myself. I know, parents still obsessed. Oh no, I'm so worried. My child is not following my own anymore. Yeah, right, he's just uh, doing what anyway. So, but there are some tricks. We also know that the choices, because their brain is not yet totally developed, their choices are not yet very firm. So they might, and, it, and now we are, now the adults are right, now we are right. Yes, they might not be in the best. So what we need to do, what I think, in our child house and in, with the children outside and in our classrooms, is giving them a sandbox where they are safe. Okay, from here to there, you can play and hit and do as much as you like. Just like in the football, if the ball goes out of line, there is a, there is a card. Do you agree? Agree with them, because if you just impose the rules again with them, they will hate you. No, they will oppose you, let's put it better, just because you tell them, even if it is reasonable, but the fact that you tell them, I, I don't like that, you just tell me. It is not the reason or non-reason. And then parents, sorry, I get, I get heated because <laughs> it's okay, everybody okay? <laughs> anyway, it's very interesting. And then the kids, the parents get upset with the kids, but the kids don't want to be told things. And the parents get upset because they, what I'm telling you is reasonable. And the kid, if he could speak his mind clearly, which cannot because he's a teenager, he will say, yes, Papa, Mama, I understand you. It's not the reason of what you're telling. It's the imposing what I'm against. Ah, that was the problem with you? Yes, that was my problem. Ah, now we understand. So we can have one trick with teenagers that I tried 
and this is a bit tricky, cut it for teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> no teenagers in the room. <laughs> you give them a sandbox, you can play here, but if you go out, you make the rules together with them. You ask them. And here is where you are giving their place. Sorry. You are giving them their own rightful place. Okay. You have a sandbox. Do you understand? You still live in my house. If you want to do as you like, welcome to, to make your own house, pay your own bills and all that. Can you? No, I cannot. Okay, so we need to do something because this is also my house and I'm still here. Okay. If you come late or if you do this, what will be the, not punishment, but the rule? Let them put them, you write them on the fridge and they are there. Next time parents don't need to impose anything because next time, ah, what time did you come? It says, it says that time, okay, it's later. I'm sorry, you said it, I'm just following the rules. Yeah? I'm just following, so you are free from that. No more fighting, but you, the most beautiful and important thing is that you, in, we adults, included them into the decision. So they are not forced, my dear family, they have nothing to fight. They will not fight. They are fighting for independence. You have your independence. We can have rules in the house. Another one that I see, which is a little bit more tricky, is, okay, you like choice? You have choice. Which one do you want, left or right? <laughs> you actually gave both of the choices, but they right, okay. You chose very well. Sadu, sadu, sadu. So you see, many of them, I tried that one with teens in the group, the only thing they didn't want it was the, opposi the opposing, uh, I would say, imposing thing. So you just give them five choices, which you already know that they are safe. You know that all of them are good. Whichever they choose, so be it. But they are making their choice, and they feel very, they feel growing. And actually, we are helping them in their development. Let me see, chase. Another thing, trick for teenagers. If they are getting bored in your class, because you have younger things, Give them responsibility, or even greater kids. Actually, if one kid you see is, is already sometimes more intelligent than the others, it happens. They already understood. Before you finish, they already understood. That's why they start pulling the hair to the other one. It's not that they are naughty. No, they are more intelligent. So they already understood what you say, and they mm, <coughs> pulling here, throwing things, and people, what now they call, which I'm not, look, please, Look at the, at the talk by, by Sir Ken Rob, uh, Robinson. Please look at it. Now the new one, same as LGBTQ, wait, I don't know how many letters. We have the, the, the attention deficit disorder. Who, who in the past had that one? When we were a child, who had that one? Did you meet somebody? Now it's fashionable. Now oh, everybody has. No, they don't have deficit disorder. It's called teenagerhood. It's called childhood. So, or it's called intelligence. Very often, and I would dare to say, is intelligence. They already understood. That's why they are not interested in that thing. We are overwhelmed, over, over underestimating them. So you see, very often, and what, what, is, what are we doing? Medication. Psychological, I, I, feel, I feel inside. I'm sorry, this is what I tell. I'm sorry when I get passionate about it. This is a crime. This is disrespectful. We start giving them narcotic, psychotic, I mean, no, no, I don't know how to say the right, but the psychological drug because they are curious, because they are intelligent. I'm not saying all the cases, and I'm not denying that that exists, but in many of the cases, to have the pandemic that we have now, I don't think so. So anyway, responsibility. When you see a child that is, uh, not really engaging, okay, now we will take care of the music, ne? so when I tell you, you will go and turn on the music. Me? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, yes, I trust you. Give them trust. This is what they are thirsting for. Trust them. Uh, yes, I trust you. Even if you know that maybe he will make a mistake, I will show you. Look, and I, what I was doing in the group, I showed them how to use the mixer, and when they came to the mixer, they even couldn't believe me. Really? Are you gonna? I'm a teenager, ne? <laughs> kind of, are you really giving? Yes, I trust you. That is the thing, and when they did it, their self-confidence came, and believe me, from then on, they will love you, because you respect them, because you trust them. That is what they are thirsty for. Yes, you are a grown-up. I can give you tasks, and even if you make a mistake, come with me. Let me know whenever you need. That is a good friend. As an adult, yes, give them responsibility, 
if technology is a problem, find ways to make, like the talk, the ways to make the, the phone, your Kalyanamita, you want to do TikTok, do them a TikTok if you wish. And warn them about the dangers of addiction of the TikTok or Facebook or whatever, and all the X-rated content. Let them know, I give a talk in Singapore, and even as a monk, there are ways to speak elegantly without showing anything about all these uh, topics. And then, uh, and also, make evident this you remember the first word relevance. it was relevance let them know that yes you sometimes don't feel very well isn't it i accompany you there are tools sometimes they feel depressed they feel anxious they don't know what's happening the body is changing sudden burst of rage and we adults want them to feel to be sitting and just be yeah yeah this is not possible so actually it's ignorance much of the I'm, i will say much of the conflict is ignorance from our side of not knowing what is what their body is and mind is supposed to be doing and that let's study and find mediation anyway th i think that could be another session because the same thing is for teens children adults elderly and special education because there they are different ways and you can arrive closely to the same point by adapting to the student not to to how we would like to, to be i hope some of the tips i hope it was not too long but if since you ask and i know that question is uh, very often yeah i hope it's something mm. okay uh thank you Bhante. Mm. I, I think that'll be our last question now huh? yeah last question yeah. okay so uh let's thank Bhante. sadhu yeah. Mm. Sadu, sadu. sadu, sadu. Okay, my family, thank you very much. We continue. I will be going day after tomorrow. Thank you so much for your hospitality, your support. I let you know what I'm doing. I'm going back to Mexico, trying to finish the monastery, and I will be doing retreats in South America. The Dhamma is growing a lot. I will go to Uruguay, Colombia, Peru, and uh, Ecuador and also United States. If you have family, as I know, some of family members live in the United States, the retreat will be in July in Arizona. And there are talks already of a talk in Houston. So if you know people, welcome. Also welcome in Mexico. I will continue trying my best to plant the Dhamma over there. Thank you for everything. I've been here two years. You have been very kind, supporting and uh, uh, I learned a lot and really you have a treasure here. Look around, how many associations you already have? You know how many Buddhist associations we have in Mexico? Zero. Actually there is, sorry, there is one that was started by Seadu Silananda and all the other ones. How many, you know how many Dhamma schools we have in Mexico? One. Zero by now I think, or I would do. So you see the, 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 the luckiness and, 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 and the fortune you have. Don't underestimate it and together we, we, we continue growing this is good sadu 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 for your, your efforts and we continue thank you